Professor Brandenburg, thank you for coming to our conference and uh, thank you for participating in such an active manner. Uh, we'd just like to ask you a question. Having been to the IFA, is there anything that particularly struck you as an innovation or something that's new? I have to admit, I didn't have that much time to look at the show floors. Mm -hmm. uh, what, as an audio guy, I saw was that there are sound bars everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, probably with very different sound qualities in there. <laughs> uh, but that shows me that people are still struggling to get somehow nice sound with very limited space in their rooms. Okay, thank you. W how do you see the future of these sort of situations with sound development, with, with speaker, loudspeaker development? Um, I think we are in for good times if people can afford the hardware the cost mm -hmm. then there will be much nicer systems in the future with more loudspeakers and all done with signal processing so what we see today is that every AV receiver has some signal processing chip integrated uh, yes that's there, but in the future it will hopefully be with a much better usability, much easier to use. Mm -hmm. So that's probably something where we can expect to get better sound in the rooms uh, by just not only having better hardware, but uh, easier ways to use them. Yeah, good, thank you. And how do you think it's going to work with user interfaces? Because many of the devices these days are getting very sort of complex to operate. Do you think that's going to have an effect? It's going to get simpler? Or um, I think that's one area where smartphones have helped quite a lot uh, over the f last few years as well. Because, uh, yes, all the knobs and the menus on the receivers themselves, uh, I think, you need a few hours of study to find something <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of cases there are apps which make it much easier to find certain functions and to use these devices. So I hope people will continue in that way. Okay. Do you ever can you sort of foresee that maybe that will be fully automatic, that it can adjust itself after this initial learning curve or, or sort of learning? Um, that's uh, one of the ideas. Uh, but there are two caveats. Mm -hmm. One is uh, we found before that uh, people don't really enjoy user interfaces which change over time. <laughs> that makes things even more complicated. Mm -hmm. And the automatic learning in terms of uh, automatic adaption to the room and so on uh, there are now many, many AV receivers delivered with microphones, so you could set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, from all we know, 90% of them are never used. <laughs> so that's again a problem of uh, difficulties to really do it. Once we have the microphones integrated into the loudspeakers perhaps, uh, and people don't even realize that the optimization procedure is running. That can make things change, but that we don't have yet. Okay. Then, um, would you like to take a guess of what's going to happen? What are the next major breakthroughs that you see in the next, say, five years? Oh, my crystal ball is just broken. <laughs> <laughs> That's really difficult to say. Uh, we are all hoping uh, for a breakthrough for these new object-oriented multi-channel sound formats. Mm -hmm. But we've seen how difficult uh, it has been with five-channel sound, mm -hmm. which basically has been used for cinema sound and nothing else. And I hope other systems will be used more broadly. Thank you very much. You're welcome.